Hello, uh, this is Donna Cato. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, today is a studio session. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, when I do studio sessions, most of the time, well, okay, all the time, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where it's going to end. We just kind of wander through polymer clay together. And I, I will admit, if something is like really a disaster at the end, I probably am not going to be putting it up. I mean, seriously. Because there's probably not that much to learn from total, complete failure. <laughs> Which happens. I'm not going to tell you it doesn't happen. But anyway, uh, this one was not a failure. So you know what we're going to be doing actually this this is where i ended up with this necklace okay but it took a while to get there and it took a while to work it out so that i think it hangs on the body nicely and you know so there were fits and starts now this is not kind of in the order of the starry night series because to tell you the truth the first thing i did was the studio session I was feeling a little bit bored. I was like, well, what can I do now? I did the black and white series, blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, in that low time, sometimes it's good to reach back into your, oh, into the techniques you've done before and you've enjoyed and, and just re-explore them. Re open that door and try again and see if something interesting or different happens. And indeed, that's what happened. I revisited the Starry Night Canes and ended up making this. And um, that turned into this fella, which is a reversible necklace and chains. And if you guys are familiar with my work, you probably know that most of the time I string my pieces on bunicord or rubber cord. And um, this was a departure, you know, chains. Uh, they lie better, they move better, they're more fluid if you actually link the components together like this. There's a lot more movement. So anyway, then it turned into earrings and I will be doing a tutorial on earrings and I'll do a tutorial on pins. Pins, pins, pins. And I did some necklaces, reversible. This one, this one reverses from this to just greens. Because when you're doing discs or flat pieces like this, it's quite, it's just as easy for me to make, um, to make it completely reversible, wearable as a reversible piece, as it is to add a black sheet or something like that. So that turned into this guy, leaves, okay, using Starry Night Canes, reverses to mud cloth canes. And then I just, Actually, I did this. I'm going to do more of these. I rather like this. It's simple on a wire ring, wire neck chain, um, and just very simple elements, easy to wear. And of course, reversible. Okay. And then finally, I made this guy, which is another leaf. The addition of these two balls improved the movement and the way the piece lies on the body. Reverses to just black and white, which is very usable for me. It's usually what I do. So anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the studio session ended up turning into a lot of other things. So coming up after the studio session, we'll be exploring earrings and pins and, uh, and other ways to use the Starry Night Canes. Now, um, you probably have seen the other tutorial. When I, after I did this studio session, I realized that it would be most helpful to give you a more comprehensive overview and instruction on how to actually make the canes.
So I went back and I did that and I took you step by step through. So what you're going to see in this um, in this studio session, I, I cover it kind of lightly. You can gloss over it. You can fast forward through it if you've watched the other one. Now, if you haven't watched the other one and you're really interested in the Starry Night series, then I would definitely watch that other tutorial so that you have a full understanding of how these canes are made. All right. So I'm not going to talk anymore. We're going to get right into the tutorial now. So I hope you enjoy it. All right. So for this Starry Night cane, what I'm going to start with, or what I started with, is a lime green. You can see a deep turquoise. There's cream. A little bit of this peach color. Now, what I'm going to try to do with this particular piece is um, make the color theme sort of 50s, you know, um, 50s, mid-century modern. You know, I grew up in the 50s and I remember a lot of peach and a lot of turquoise. I remember my mother knitting big mohair sweaters in this color and this color and it was just all the rage in the neighborhood. All the mothers were doing things like that. So that's what I'm going to do because I would like to have a bunch of starry night canes in those colorations. So I will continue. Now, after chopping everything up and making sure that everything is, uh, well, all the bits are fairly small, and what I did was I just simply took my blade and chopped like this, and then maybe turned it over, pulled some over, and continued chopping. You can also do this in a food processor, of course, and, um, I think the ones I do from now on will be in my little Oscar food processor. So I'm going to flatten this out and I want to flatten it so it is just a bit thicker than the pasta machine. And I'm going to try to maintain this rectangular shape as I roll. And I don't mind it getting a bit wider. But I'd like the shape to be fairly tidy. Okay. Now I call these Starry Night Canes and, and they were in my book. But when I think about it, I think maybe the first person I saw doing this was either Sarah Shriver or Clue. Maybe Clue, because she used to have, with her Coco Pelli canes, this kind of mottled background composed of browns and tans and beiges and that sort of thing. And it really offset her um, the central image nicely. So... I think the first time I saw speckled canes like this, um, actually, I think she just chopped and then turned it into a block and used it that way. I think what I'm doing a little different here, differently here is stretching it out in the pasta machine and creating a grain to it and making the colors, the bits of color stretch out. Uh, and they're they're finer. But the concept of chopping clay like this and then making a block and then using this chopped up uh, block as a background, I think that was either Clue or or Sarah Shriver. I, I don't know who, which one. Could have been either. All right, so I'm going to roll this through the thickest setting in the pasta machine, and I'm going to put this one of the narrower sides right on the rollers not the not the wide but the narrow okay so now i'm going to cut this in half and i'm going to take and just lay one half on top of the other i'm not turning it so I've established that the grain is running this way, so the grain is going to run the same way. In other words, this way, not this way. 
Okay. I think that should be clear. So you can see what's happening inside, like so. All right, so let me roll it through the pasta machine again. Still on the thickest. Cut it in half and I will simply fold it back like I did before. So you can see, now, if I fold it over, it starts mirror imaging. Now, only here, it's the closest to mirror image. As it gets farther into the sheet, of course, then the pattern will change. Let's see what I've got on this side. You see, so it's less like a mirror image, of course, because here, where I sliced and backed it up, that was at the exact point that, um, you know, the image, well, I think you understand, it's mirror imaged because of where I cut, as opposed to doing something like this, taking and just turning it. And then now I do not have a mirror image at all. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening on this edge. I think you can see. Now the edge where the clay is running perpendicular to the rollers, you see how stretched out the color bits have become? That makes sense, doesn't it? You're putting double thickness of clay through, you're forcing it through and elongating it, making it longer. Whereas this other edge, the clay is not really widening that much. It gets a bit wider. And so those little bits are shorter. Now you have a choice. I think I like this long side. So. This long side is going to be the face of my cane, and I'm not going to roll it through anymore. I'm just going to create a slab out of this long side. Okay, so let's cut it in half. Place one on top of the other. Cut it in half again. Put them together again, and this is my cane. And I like it. I like this. Now let's take a look at what the other edge, the other side looks like. I'm going to scoop this up a bit, like so, so you can see the differences between the two. So this side is rather choppy. And this side is stretched out long. So, I mean, I could use either because it's just a question of when I use it, cutting for which side, which face, and using that. Okay, so that's just a very simple little starry night, what I call starry night cane. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to make some others using my other 50s colors. This one will be predominantly turquoise. Here we'll have predominantly peach and then I'm going to make a yellow one like this. And I think I'm going to mix more of this um, sort of off-white color and make one that's off-white with just little flecks of gray or something in it. So I will be back when I've made my canes. All right, so here you see various bits of the turquoise. I've got the turquoise, I've got a deeper turquoise, I have sort of a greener turquoise. I actually put in the scraps from the other uh, cane. I've got a little bit of this ivory color. I put in some powder blue here. I've got some yellow down here. Now, these bits, all of this clay should be conditioned. You don't want to take clay that is not conditioned and do this. Make sure that all the bits you put in to your food processor are conditioned. Now, I'm not going to take this over to where I do it, but I'm going to pulse it a few times. You don't want to, like, start it up and leave it. 
because um, the little Oscar gets very hot. You'll, you may actually find that you are actually cooking bits in there. So you're going to pulse, pulse, pulse. Look at it. And when the pieces are just nice little bits of color, then you're going to stop. And I'll be back when I reach that point. So after 10 quick pulses, just like on, off, on, off, on, off, 10 times. This is what I have, little bits. Now I'm going to pour these bits out on my work surface. Like so, try to get them all out. Let's get them all out and then take these and form a loaf, a nice little rectangular loaf as I did before, and then follow the same basic process. So that's as simple as that is. I think this one's going to be really pretty. Okay, I'll be back. So here are these bits after I put them through my pro food processor. And uh, it's I did the same thing, 10 quick pulses, and this is what I got. So I'm going to turn it into our third cane. So here I am with the uh, off-white and black and gray uh, bits in my little Oscar. And I actually processed this 25 turns instead of 10 because I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it together. And I'm not going to roll it through the pasta machine because I'd like to make it look a little more like linoleum. And we shall see how that goes. So let's take it and just dump the contents of little Oscar out onto my work surface. Take all the bits. You can see that the machine itself gets quite dirty, but for a cane like this, I'm not, it doesn't seem to make any difference. Okay, just clean it up best you can. Now I'm gonna form it into that same loaf shape but instead of, actually, I'm just going to kind of push it all together like this and try to form the cane just by pushing all of this together, compressing it together. So that this particular component, I'm hoping, will look more like linoleum. That old-fashioned 50s kind of linoleum that everybody seemed to have. Okay. And this is, I think, what Clue did with her browns to make the background for her Cocopelli canes. Or this type of thing. Where you just chop up various bits of clay and uh, you put them together like so. Just make sure, as I said before, that the clay is conditioned. So I'm going to take a cut and see what we have. Okay, well, I think that's fine. Now I can also, for instance, if I felt that this was, uh, this pattern was too large, then you know what? I could just start chopping it up again and breaking up bits like these. But I think I like this, so I'm going to leave it just as it is. So now I have one that looks like linoleum, and then I have four other canes and the colors primarily that I'll be working with. And in each cane, I have an option of the long 
the pattern that features the long strands, well, long strands, here's that side, or something that's more chopped up and compressed. Here are the long strands in yellow. Here's the compressed side. Long strands, and this doesn't even bother me, these gaps. I'll deal with those later if I run into them. And, um, and then the short compressed side. And then in the green, the short compressed side. And then the long strands. So I have, you know, I have some options here when I start putting together my beads. All right, so I'm going to prepare for one last um, cane, and then I'll be back. All right, so I've been making some beads. I wanted to make some beads before I showed you uh, how to make the beads. And, you know, I'm putting them together and I've got various combinations of the, of the canes that I have right there. There they are. And I'm looking and I think I'm missing something. Now, if you're familiar with my work at all, you know that I don't use a lot of blues and I don't use a lot of violets. The colors that I tend to, that I'm drawn to, are warm. They're the reds and the yellows and the oranges. And so, you know, you're not going to find a lot of these cool colors in my work because that's really not what I'm drawn to. But I'm looking here, and I think I need some violet, which is... So not me. So anyway, I'm going to make another cane and it's going to be lavender and white and then just other bits and pieces. I've even taken some scraps from the other canes, put them together. So let me make that cane and I'll be back. Okay, so I made the cane. Now I'll make a couple beads. Let's see how the addition of this color with the others effects our beads. All right, so I made two little beads using the violet. You know, I think it's going to be fine. It, probably going to be less violet, more of these other colors, because as I said, it's not my favorite. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I don't think I have a single garment that is violet. Not a single one. Um... But that's where we are. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, this is just too big. These bits of gray, it just turned into a very large pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to return it to my little Oscar, and I am going to make this whole pattern smaller. I'll be back. All right, so now we're ready to make beads. Now, um... In order to keep all of these little pod shapes about the same size, you should start with the same size underneath, your scrap core underneath. So I've made all of these a half inch diameter by one and one half inches long, okay? And that should keep them all pretty close to the same size. Now, I'm gonna make a very simple bead just like this, okay? Where I've got one color, one color, and then there's a band of the black in between. So let me see which I'm going to make this one, and I think with the green, these two. Okay, so first I'm going to start by just cutting off a slice, and it measures, oh, I would say maybe between two and three millimeters. Do the same with the green. Like so. And now each of these I'm going to roll through setting number five on my pasta machine. Every slice of clay I cut is going to be rolled through that same setting. Now here's black that I cut off and I rolled it through the same setting, setting five. And if I always start with the same size core, half inch diameter by one and one half inches uh, long, and 
all my canes, all the slices are rolled through the same thickness, then you know what? I should have a really good chance of keeping all of these the same size. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a piece here and I'm going to wrap this around the center. Like so. Like that. So I've got a band around the middle. Now I'm going to take each of these slices Move this down a bit. And it's going to take two to go around. So I'm comparing it from the bottom of the band to the end. And I will cut like that. Then I will repeat so I have two pieces. Set this aside. I'll make another bead with that later. And just wrap this around the bottom like so, and then take the other slice, butt it up against, and then trim. Like so, okay, Let's pull it over. Now, when you do it this way, and you've got the uh, pattern running uh, parallel to the sides of the uh, of the inter interior core and then you close the end what you do is you're elongating right you're just pulling the stripes out like this now if I were to take this piece the second color and wrap it around this way When you start pulling and closing the end, you get this. It, it's just a different look because you're kind of, you're making these individual stripes wider. You're pulling them out. Now, you could get really confused. I, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna put these together but I think it's easiest for the first necklace I make using these canes. And in this particular case, I think it's just easier if all of them look like this. All the stripes pulled out and meeting at a point on the ends. So I think all of my beads are going to look like this, not like this, okay? Now I can make a decision about the band as well. Should the band run as I've done it here or should the band run as I've done it here? You see the difference. The stripes wrap around here and then the stripes are chopped and short in this case. So I think this time I will make them run around and not use this. Okay, so let's cover the other side. You can get so caught up in all the variations that it gets really confusing. I have a tendency to do that. And the first time, it's probably best to keep things simple. Trim the excess away. Okay, now just roll it to join all those slices together. Then we're gonna do the typical, the same thing we do all the time. Just take our fingers and push in lightly to indent the end 
then rotate and pull the stripes from the side up around the end. Now I'm not putting a hole through the length of these because I think I'm going to put them together. I'm going to join them using screw eye pins and uh, oval jump rings. Okay, so let's close the other end. I've been feeling a little achy. I hope I don't have like COVID. That's why I'm also a little more sniffly than usual, which I'm pretty sniffly. I have a lot of allergies. But I'm gonna stay in my house until I know what's going on. Luckily, I can still clay. Okay, so there's, there's that little guy, and I can refine the tips just a little bit. But there he is, okay, so here we go. So that's the beginning of the necklace. I think this is going to be a nice one. I might even make these just a bit longer by drawing the points out. I don't know yet. Okay. This one appears to be a little bigger. Totally possible. Now, these are just, and I'll quickly show you. I'm gonna take the core and then take and press slices like this. Let me take the green. And I'm not measuring, as you can see. I will simply just cover with alternating slices. I'm not really too concerned about them fitting perfectly, obviously. You can see that I'm not. don't think that's too bad. Right. And now I will do the same thing. I'm going to trim the ends. Press the ends in. Close the clay from the sides up over the scrap core. When you rotate, you have a better chance of everything meeting nicely at the ends. So just keep rotating and drawing the clay up as you go. Now, I don't think I'm going to use these in this particular piece, but might as well show you. Now, of course, something like this can also be twisted if you wanted. Just by taking the ends and rotating, moving them like this, and you'll get a nice twist. Okay. Now, here's another thing I did. 
put that there. And that was just simply the linoleum type this. And I did make the pattern smaller, but I managed to pick up some violet too. I had not intended to do that, but I guess it's okay. And so this is just simply half black and then half the linoleum. Work the same way. All right, I made this one too. I don't like it very much, so it will not be used in anything, but I had to try it. Okay, so let me continue making beads and then I will cure that and then we'll put it together. Okay, so I made them and then I decided to elongate them. Remember how short they were? They were like this short. So I stretched them out. But in the process, the band got a little messed up. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do about that, whether I should just leave it or not. We'll see how it looks. I'm going to bake the pieces and then I'm going to put them together. All right, so I'm back. Uh, this is day two. And um, I did put them all together. And this is what I have. Now, let me just say one thing. We're not designed to wear this kind of shape. Not around the neck anyway. You see, if the clasp is here, let's just put that there as a clasp, then our necks naturally curve. There's a curvature in our body. We're not stick straight. So what happens if I leave it this way, of course, these are going to stick out straight. And then it's all angular. And the only place where they'll lie flat is in front of your body, underneath your uh, sternum. So, you know, not a, not the sternum, scapula, scapula. I think the bones are scapula. Anyway. So this is, from a design perspective, I think a problem. And I don't think this would be the most comfortable thing to wear either. All right, so what I'm gonna do, and I, I link them together with screw eye pins and oval jump rings, uh, something I will show you later. Now I'm gonna take this apart, and I'm sorry, uh, my pliers are across my studio. I'm going to get them because that's where I was working and putting it together. So before I do that, let me just point out that as a single, let's say as a single chain, it's problematic, right? This would, if this is across the back, then this is down in front. If this is across the back, might be more comfortable along the neck, although it could pinch you. But then in the front, you've got this V. And, you know, I think that that's really not very attractive. You know, this V hanging low on your body. So for me, I'm thinking, let me find where I was. I think I was here. Yeah, like that. So as a double-stranded necklace, I think it works better. So let me split this off into two strands. Just by unlinking here. And then on the other side. There's one. And then I will undo this. Now, I don't draw my designs first. Uh, I, I think some people are able to do that. For me, I, I don't know. It never seems to work all that well. All right, so now I have two. You see, one, two. Now, I cured these as well. I'm not going to use them because see how thin these are? Well, these are simply too chunky. The length might be good, 
although I would like this to even be shorter, um, but they're just too, too wide. But let's just use them for purposes of length. So now if I take one of these and I put it on this one, and then I take another and I put it at the end of the other length. So here's one and here's another like so. And then let's say I put two here. two here and then I'm going to put one here and one here <laughs> it's a little difficult when they're not together so what I have now is one I've added the same thing to both chains but in different spots so at one end I've got two on this and then at the opposite end there's one and then on the other the other uh, row I've got the opposite so I have two and then I have the long lengths coming around and then a shorty so let me just try to pull them up to where I think they will be okay and this is kind of difficult because I'm so I'm trying to show you something that and they just want to keep rolling around but I think you'll get the idea okay so now I think this will be more comfortable at the back of the neck especially if I make them a bit shorter like that but what happens at the bottom is now suddenly they're not aligned all right so they're not going to be aligned here they're going to be offset which I think is going to make a more attractive presentation like that instead of them being completely aligned. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to make these six pieces, the two that will go, the two that will go on each, the one, but it's a total of six. I'm adding six pieces. And then after that, I'll put it together and we shall see if um, the necklace might further uh, benefit from the addition of something like lentils positioned in certain spots along the two rows. Okay, so let me get that. Oh, in terms of the size. Now, remember, I wanted them to be what I'm making here is going to be half the size of this. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to roll this into a half inch diameter, and but instead of cutting an inch and a half, I'm going to cut these sections three quarters of an inch, so it's half the volume. Okay, actually, I'll come back after I do that much, and I'll show you how I cover them. Okay. All right, so I cut all my little bits, and you can see they're half the size of the long ones, and the big long ones. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the black band around the middle a little bit thinner. And wrap it around the center. As I did before. Then, as I did before, I say that a lot, as, as I did before, I will take and compare and go boink, boink. Now, if you have my cane book, you know, I have, actually have a chapter on Starry Night Canes. I, um, I really like them and I liked making them. So I pretty much devoted a whole chapter to them. But over the years, I sort of forgot about them. Isn't that terrible? I just, hello, forgot. Okay, so let me take this green. Should I use the green or should I? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Oh, I think I'll use green. Because it's right here. Will I regret using green? I don't know. If I do, I think it'll be kind of a small regret. All right. In the world of regrets, this will be a small regret. The wide world of regrets. All right, so let us reshape this little one. Just going to cut some of the excess away. There's not a lot of it. Maybe I'll leave that excess and that goes back into the pile. All right. Doink, 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 doink. Doink, doink, doink. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to reduce it. Oops. Just a bit. So that it is the same thickness as the necklace beads that I reduced before, the long skinny ones. Now, I could have started out by reducing this further. Maybe that would have been um, better. But there is distortion in the band in the large pieces. I don't really mind that so much, so... That wasn't a huge concern for me. Now, let's draw the ends out, as I did before. This is a little cutie. I'm liking these beads more and more. They do look like crayons to me. That's not a bad thing. I don't know why, but they look like crayons. <laughs> like so. That looks fine. I don't know why, but for this particular piece, the distortion and the band, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so let me take one of these and let's compare it. And it's a little shorter than half. I can pull it out a bit. But a little shorter than half, I think is going to be fine. I think that will actually be better for the fit. Let's say this one goes here. So now I need another one. All right, so there's one of six that I'm going to make. I will be back. So my pieces, the small pieces are out of the oven, but they're still hot. They have to cool. Now, while they were in the oven, I thought I'd experiment a little bit with some... Uh, sort of lentil shaped beads with uh, with this cane on top and you know this is raw it's not cured it's going to sit right there i'm going to make some of these because i think these could be very useful and i might end up using them in the finished piece i love the way they go with these beads okay so how do i make them well, the difficulty, because it's basically uh, a mass of clay inside and then two slices on the outside, the difficulty is figuring out what the mass inside should be. So what I've done is I've taken a cutter and it's smaller as it should be. And I rolled this clay through setting number one. So let's take And because I did it before, I know exactly what it's going to take. Now, I tried it first with just two, and it was just too thin. It wasn't the right mass. And by the right mass, I want something that's kind of close to the thickness of these long beads. I don't want something that's a lot thinner or something that's a lot thicker. So I'm aiming for something that's about the same height. 
Now that's just me. I don't, it's what I decided is right in terms of what this should be, okay? Now I'm just gonna take this because it's just a question of mass, right? I need the correct mass. So I'm gonna take these and roll them. I'm rolling it into a ball, just a nice little ball. And I'm going to turn this into a lentil by taking this acrylic, piece of acrylic. Oops, dropping things. This is a piece of acrylic, this is small. And I'm gonna take and center that clay and start rolling and applying pressure and just rolling and rolling and rolling. Uh, and I have to admit, I'm, I'm not the best lentil maker. Some people are so good at it. And I'm like, okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it, maybe. But all I'm trying to do here is flatten it and bring it out. But others are so good at it. I have to practice. All right, so now I'm just going to try to refine the edges. I should have practiced before. But seriously, all I really wanted to do is not make a traditional lentil shape with two points. Just something sort of gently rounded like that, that I could put two cane slices on and they would fit. Okay. All right, so there, I've got that. And you know what, it's pretty good. I'll have to practice making lentils. Honestly, I've, I've never really made <laughs> many lentils and occasional lentil is just about all I'm good for. But I'm sure on YouTube, you can find people who are making lentils like crazy who could give you all the fine points of lentil making. Okay, so now I'm just going to try to secure that to the middle of this edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Then I will just work it all the way around. Okay, there we go, it's half. Let's do it again on the other side. I'm going to pull this side over here. And because I don't know whether I got it exactly perfectly in the middle, oh, I might have to pull something a little bit more in one spot and then I might have to compress something a bit in another and try to take that thick edge. See that thick edge of black? Well, I want to kind of turn that under so it doesn't appear to be this black band around the perimeter. Just try to close them best you can. Like so, work your way around. As you work, Try to get this line, the separation between the two cane slices in the middle. Okay, now I'm gonna take my little brass rod. You guys know I use this a lot. By the way, how I got a bunch of these brass rods at a hobby shop, you know, not, uh, not a craft shop. But you know, we used to have hobby shops that sold things like model trains and, you know, kits to make cars and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, they actually sell brass tubing by the foot. You'll find a display with long tubes and they'll cut it for you the length you want. And sometimes they have these ends 
you know? They've got like an extra six inches at the end that nobody wants. And generally speaking, those end up in some kind of scrap bin or a, a selection of scraps, little scrap end cuts. So that's kind of where that came from. All right, so this is perfect for me. So you saw what that was. This sheet has been rolled through. Well, actually, I mean, it's just going to depend on the cane that you select um, if you do this. But just take a cutter that's a bit smaller and then start experimenting with the thickness and the mass. And you, you'll arrive at the correct um, mass as I did. Okay, now let me talk about this cane. I can't show you this cane because this cane was part of a class and that class was sold up to, no, well, I think it's still online and I think I just sold it again. So if, if I'm selling something, I can't show it to you for free. Now, some of the things that I've been showing you have been in classes, but some of those classes are very, very old. So I think people who purchased them years and years ago probably don't mind if I show you, but I have to be very careful and not put online things that I've just recently or fairly recently sold. Okay, so I'm going to make a few more of these in case I need them. I'm not even sure I'm going to need them, uh, but I do this a lot. I make things. It doesn't, it takes me very little time just to make things, different components, and then after to see whether they work with a piece. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so how are these put together? Well, what I do is I actually screw these little screw eye pins with these guys right into the clay. And why wouldn't I put it in when, they're, when the clay is raw? I found that if I try to force it into the hole when it's raw, it's really difficult to get the clay around the threads and the screw. You can see the threads here. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. And um, if there are spaces uh, in the threads, like if the clay isn't completely around it, well, it's weaker. So I found that it's better to cure the pieces and then um, drill them in. Just screw them right in. Now the first thing you have to do is you have to do a little pilot hole. I stabbed myself, so I had to get a Band-Aid, like so, just in both ends, like that. And even then, it might be a little difficult to get the screw in, so I take a very fine drill bit, excuse me, and then I put it in that little hole, and I just, of just a few turns, makes it a bit easier to screw the screw into the clay. Now, once the tip catches in, you can see I don't even have to hold it. Now it's just a matter of turning the bead and the screw is actually being embedded in the clay then, just like that. Right now, sometimes you don't need to uh, to actually use that little drill. So let me try on this side, but it is a little tougher. And I have to hold it a little bit more, but it will catch, and then I can screw it in like so. All right. So I like these very much. You have to physically unscrew them to get things apart. Okay. So now, let's take one, and I guess I will put this one, this, and actually I'm going to use this and one of these. Now on this side, let me use this one, this one, or maybe the purple purple and the green like so
And you know what? I'm going to have to check the other one as well. Here is the second one. And on this side, I will have one. And then on this side, I will have two. Maybe the green one here and the red and purple one here. So let me try putting it together this way. So these three go with this one. Set that aside. Now, I'm going to use oval jump rings. Um, oval jump rings are far preferable to round ones. So I would recommend that you always use ovals. You see, if you use round jump rings, the ring turns continuously. And as it turns, eventually the opening of the ring is going to end up maybe down here, up there, but eventually that happens and then you lose your piece. As long as you use a good substantial oval ring, that opening, can you see the opening? It's right there on the side. Well, gravity pulls it down and that opening will never, uh, will never find itself against either of those eye pins. So it's much, 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 much more secure. Okay. Ovals, not round. I don't even know why they make round ones, to tell you the truth. If you're gonna use something round like that, you have to use a, a split ring. Okay, so let's put this guy back up. Close it. So one side, and then on this side, we're gonna put the purple one. So that's one strand, one strand, like so. All right, now I'm going to string the other. And the other one will have two on this side and one on this side. Okay, here we go. There's this and this. They just kind of rolled away. Let's see, where's the other one? Oh, the macro. Oh, I mean, it really rolled off the table. Okay, so let's put this guy here. Let's put... I'm not sure I did a very good job of this. Like that. Well, that's the way it's going to have to be for now. what happens when we put them together. So this is the two, so I would put the one. And then the two on this side will be together. So you can see what's happening here at the bottom. 
Maybe I should put them together. It's really hard to show this flat. Let me put these together. They keep coming apart. So let me put. You still can't see it, but it, it sort of turns into this kind of arrangement. See where the where the bottom isn't like this anymore, and it isn't pointy like that. Where the points are just kind of off a little bit like so. So it's gonna sit more like that. It'll be flat on the sides, but then down here it turns into that. Now I'm thinking that these round rounds that are curing are really gonna, I'm gonna like those a lot. You'll have one here, you'll have one here, then we'll have one there. And actually here and then here, here and then here. So we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Okay, so I put screw eye pins in these guys and I put them in, in the same place opposite sides on the two uh, the two strands. And what has happened is um, because they're the same length, of course, now I've got these two bars running parallel uh, parallel to your neck actually. Um, actually perpendicular to your neck. So it's a problem. I don't like that arrangement. So let me see what happens if I take one more, one more of these little guys and turn it to the other side so I've made one strand longer. I like this arrangement better as I'm looking at it here. Um, it's not ideal, but I still do prefer it. I prefer these angles to this action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play around more with these. Now you see, if I put one of these on this side, that's gonna drop this again, right? This is gonna drop down, and then I'm gonna have roughly the same thing. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, if I drop it, if I put one on this side, let's say I put one here, this will drop this way. So I'm just going to give it a go. I'm going to start trying to insert these, almost using them like spacers to see how I can drop and arrange these long pieces just by altering the length of these, okay? I put one in here. I'm going to try that next one in here. And let's see what happens here, how much it drops. I'm assuming it's going to drop more like something more like that. Okay, but I won't know until I put it in. So I'm going to put it in now. All right, so I added this disc. And this is kind of what happened to the bottom. Something like this. And I like it, I do. Now, do I need to add more of these to the whole necklace? I might need to add maybe one here, but remember now it's gonna drop this further. So if I add one, let's say here, here, then I should also, doink, add the same thing maybe here. 
So let me try that. I've got to put O-rings. I mean, I've got to put screw eye pins in these two and they are slightly smaller. That's okay. So let me do that and try arranging that. I mean, I may have to tear this apart and do it a couple more times before I arrive at the arrangement that I want. But if that happens to be the case, it's not all that difficult. All right, so I put all of these guys, these round guys I had on, and I realized I need more. I really like them between each of these long beads, so I'm gonna have to make one, two, I'm, I'm gonna have to make at least four. So whatever I add to one side, let's say I put two here, I have to add to the other side. If I want to maintain the same drop of both of these pieces, I may end up removing one of these from this side. I don't know that I want to keep it. The more I add, the longer it gets. So um, I've got quite a bit of work left to do. Ultimately, I might end up removing one of the long ones. So we won't know till we get there. I'm going to make at least four more of these. Too large and too small. Then I will be back. Okay, peeps, I finished. Now, it's really hard because the necklace is big, long, and so you see I put my clasp on it. And I've got two of the, what did I call these? Hmm. Shooting star, something like that. I don't know what I call it. Anyway, so I've got a small one here, a large one here. It doesn't really matter. I kind of like it because it makes them slightly different lengths or it sets the center off just a little bit and so we've got two small ones and then one small one and then the large ones and from here on down all of the long beads are separated by one of these jelly rolls they are jelly rolls i really like them Okay, so that's it. So I like this necklace. These pieces remind me of crayons for some reason. I think I'll call it the crayon necklace because that is what they make me think of. I'm going to try to take a better picture of it, but it's difficult because they are quite long. But I think it turned out pretty well for this studio session. So uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, having some patience uh, as I sort of worked my way through uh, to a finished design. I will be using the Starry Night Canes for more, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Okay, so until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, then please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. I do read all your comments. It's hard for me to keep up, but I will try to be better. It's hard to be in my studio working and actually answering comments on YouTube at the same time. And I tend to, once I get into my studio, I tend to forget that there's a world outside those doors. So... I would just like you to know that I do read them and I do appreciate them. So until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. Goodbye.